Hi, I'm Leah Longbreak, the president for the Cleveland Association for Broadcasters and also a producer and host with Evergreen Podcasts. And I'm here today with fellow board member, David Allen Moss, who is the chief creative officer for Evergreen Podcasts. David, hello. Hello, Leah. <laughs> it's great to be on, on your show and I'm certainly proud to be a member of your board. Well, we love having you and, and you've done so much with us in 2020 and have been such a great asset. So thank you for being a part of it. Well, this is probably, I want to acknowledge one of the most challenging years to become the president of a <laughs> nonprofit trade association <laughs> such as CAB. And I'm not sure how you're uh, handling all this, but here's to 2021. <laughs> Thanks, David. I, right? I mean, it has been a challenge, but it's, yeah. it's a worth taking the challenge on. Mm -hmm. So you have such a fascinating background in arts and media. How did you get into podcasting? Well, you know, I think I, it was one of these things where I maybe wasn't looking for that, um, but it found me. So my former business partner, we've done a number of startups together. Michael D'Aloya reached out to me in the spring of 2017, I was running my own agency, Moss Media, and it was naturally a lot of consulting uh, for digital websites. And um, he said, hey, I'm doing this thing and I'd really love it if you could come over. And one thing led to another. I was already doing some project work for Front Porch and we just decided to roll my agency right up into Front Porch. So Moss Media became part of Front Porch Media Network and um, we just started building it from there. Um, a lot of the new media that I've been a part of has been leading edge, uh, digital out of home, web back in the turn of the century, it would have been late 90s. And um, I've always enjoyed that. So podcasting is no exception. There's a lot of technology involved. Um, there's a lot of new ways of distrib distributing the, uh, the media. So it's right up my alley. I've always been sort of a hybrid of someone really interested in technology and how it delivers storytelling. And in this case, it's podcasts. So, so uh, just in the last couple of years since the birth of Evergreen, which came from Front Porch, sure. what have you seen as the biggest change and biggest challenge in podcasting? In the last three years? Did mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. Make sure my ears are working here. <laughs> um, I think there's a whole lot of interest from bigger players. I think that terrestrial radio is seeing the opportunity um, maybe that they, they may even perceive they lost and they've gotten involved in a major way. So you obviously saw what happened with iHeart. They opened their whole, um, they opened everything they had to the podcasting community say, hey, come be a part of the party. Our podcasts are on iHeart. Just about everybody's in the world. Um, we still have uh, the 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 uh, thoroughbred and the big leader is still Apple, and they were the founders of the format. So it, it, it's uh, it makes sense that they're still out in front. Um, but a lot of innovation happening around Apple, and then obviously we're seeing a lot of consolidation because there's so many people involved now. Yeah, like a Spotify just purchased Megaphone, and and you're seeing these different companies just start to kind of eat up other ones. Yeah, sure. When you go to the trade shows, there's a number of players. There's a few new players every so often, but there's a number of real strong players in distribution, uh, in audio technology. A lot of people that the broadcasters already know about, um, but it's such a software intensive uh, trade. And I think we're just going to continue to see more uh, consolidation around uh, players uh, distribution platforms, ad service platforms, all the technologies are going to come together. Uh, and then the one thing that's really uh, uh, most valuable is the IP, the content itself. So that's going to continue to be attractive to the larger uh, groups, even the, the non-traditional podcasters, the Netflix and the HBOs and some of the other um, TV and film networks, they're going to be getting into podcasting in the, in the coming years. Absolutely. And then yeah. how does that then translate with sales and marketing? Ooh, uh, it's a real challenge. It's still, you know, there's a million and a half podcasts. And we know that it's probably the top 10% of those that really have 80% of the 
uh, sponsorship and ad revenue. So, you know, you really have to be highly successful as a podcast to generate those grandiose revenues. Um, how does it impact sales and marketing? It's, it's just, we have to pay attention to IAB compliances. We have to pay attention to um, new uh, measurements and new ways to monetize. We're looking at more creative ways of attracting sponsors, sponsors to shows, but also sponsors to whole channels. And I think that's very attractive to a lot of brands. And then for us, it's just aligning with the people that can help us find those brands. You know, you can have the best podcast in the world, but if nobody knows about it, discoverability can be a real uh, liability. So, so pre-COVID, a, yeah. a lot of podcasters, I mean, really the birth probably of podcasting or people doing it right from their homes, from their basement. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as it grew in companies like ours, yeah. we have our own professional studios and we were primarily doing it out of there, except for maybe an occasional remote but then COVID happened and now everything is being done from home. So can you tell us about your perspective on how podcasting has changed this year alone and what you see in the future based off of how quickly people had to step up during this quarantine? Well, I think people in media are pretty uh, resourceful. Let's just say that. It really doesn't matter. What part of creative industries you're in, uh, we've seen photographers, videographers, and now even musicians, how resourceful we've had to be. I think it's really good for our team um, to go to an immediate uh, remote version uh, because as we scale, we're going we're gonna to need to be remote. We've got people in Iceland. We've got people in the UK that are creating podcasts for our network already. So we need to be very fluid with the communication and the tools. Like we, we obviously investigated what were the best tools for remote recording where we wouldn't have any uh, change in the quality of our capture. That took, that took a lot of heavy lifting right out of the gate. But I think we, within two weeks, we were back up and running and we just, it was like we didn't miss a beat. And so I think what's interesting now is Deciding how much of a building do we need? How much of a studio do we need? How virtual can we be? You know, Pandora is largely a virtual company, if you can believe that. Oh. Thousands of employees and contractors. And they really don't have a headquarters like you would imagine. And that's really a trend, I think, in all businesses right now. You're seeing oh. it from insurance companies like Progressive and Geico to obviously people like us in media with podcasting. Even healthcare. My, uh, I have a good friend who works with Aventus and they've changed their whole thing to where you would basically reserve a desk. If you need to go in, let's say you have a certain set of meetings that you have to have on the campus, then you literally reserve a desk or a quiet room or an office for that period of time. But you don't have an office anymore and you're working remote because they've actually done so well with it and they've seen such savings so yeah and i think for some people it's created more of a work-life balance too yeah are you gonna raise your hand i'll raise mine yeah <laughs> i do like that i can just get up and change the laundry over in between meetings <laughs> yeah well you can concentrate in different ways yeah you know um and maybe take more breaks more meaningful breaks yeah more mindfulness and you cut your commute out and you've cut anywhere from an hour to two hours a day of just driving. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty special. Yeah. I like that. I do too. And it helps the environment. Yeah. So um, for those that are interested in podcasting, that they're brand new to this, what are some of the tips that you would offer them? Well, that's what's amazing. There are, it's still brand new. And we might, uh, we might be a little overwhelmed by the number of podcasts. But think about a million and a million and a half podcasts, and then think about how many people are in the world. There's still a lot of voices that are underserved. There's still a lot of stories that aren't being told. Um, what would I say to the people that want to get in? Um, the founder of Pod uh, Podfest uh, has a book called uh, "Start Ugly," and maybe you can put the link in your in your post. Um, 
that's what I'd say. Don't wait to start. If you Let's find if you find half a dozen people or if you find two people to interview, you have to go through that anyway to figure out uh, the kinks, work the kinks out and, and figure out the whole process of recording and editing. So just start if you really think you want to do it. Um, there's no wrong a, way to a, start. Yeah, there's no wrong way to start. You could even start with a, you know, a little Mr. Microphone or the microphone on your laptop. Just start and then work through the format, work through the strategy, think about your brand. Are you going to build out more of a brand experience? Are you going to have you know, webinars? Are you going to have online, you know, video content? Are you going to have swag? Are you going to have a blog? You can start all of that. Yeah, so, it's all intertwined. Um, you know, and then also, why do you want to do a podcast? Is it, is it, is there an audience? You know, if it's an infomercial, it's not going to be successful. But if it relates to your industry in some interesting way or captures stories about your industry that aren't being told and it makes you a thought leader or it makes you innovative, then it's going to be a lead gen for a corporation or, or a consultant or an individual. We're seeing a lot of great, and, and you're aware of this um, opportunity with companion podcasts. We're now doing our mm -hmm. second companion podcast. We've had conversations with Simon and Schuster, and we know there's a lot of uh, tumult and, and change happening over on, on that side of the world, uh, the publishing side of the world. Um, and they're trying to figure out what's our play with podcasting, but for an author, it's a great way to go. Four episodes, eight episodes, 12 episodes as an extension. It's not an audio book. It's an extension or a companion piece yeah. to the book. And, and think about all the other ways a podcast can kind of be an extension to the, to the narrative or extension to your brand. A and lot with of ways. that though, how important do you think it is for companies to consider having a podcast to go along with their company? Well, there's a cost. There is a cost. I mean, you have to either invest in people on your end and invest in the gear. It's not a big cost. Um, I think you just have to be practical at first and realistic about does this, is this really a compliment to the way we already market? So there's a lot of great traditional ways that we still market. I think print still has a place. I came from print way back in another lifetime. We still do a lot of great print. Um, but can the podcasting stand out from the crowd? Can it differentiate, differentiate you and your brand? Right? So if it's a legal firm, we're doing a new podcast with a law firm. And they've been very creative in the naming of the podcast and the positioning of the types of conversations they're having. They're not solving the world's problems or the legal community's problems. They're actually putting a nice spotlight on some of the more challenging aspects of the current legal world, right? And I think yeah. they'll build community around that podcast. They'll take down some silos with that podcast between uh, their firms and other law firms. I think that's really great. Mm -hmm. That's where podcasts can be a real unifier. They don't have to be about uh, making you uh, the big dog in a competitive space. They can actually unify and, and set you up as sort of a leader in your industry. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's something, a, a myth I'd like to kind of debunk is that mm -hmm. podcasts aren't in competition with each other. No, uh, I got to, I've never been, I've been to a lot of uh, trade shows and, uh, uh, you know, uh, seminars and conferences in the last 20 to 25 years. I've been to a lot. And sometimes I'm speaking, sometimes I'm just working the floor. I've never been to a community of minds like the podcast festivals. I mean, I'm just itching to get back. The last one I was at was in March and we were, we had such, uh, our hands were cracking and bleeding because we were using so much. Uh, we already kind of knew something was going on. And so every like 30 feet, there was an auto sensor. We were at the Marriott World in Orlando. Uh, people were washing their hands, uh, bumping elbows, bumping fists. It was brand new to us. Um, but I can't wait to get back to that because everyone wants to help each other grow. 
Um, I just got off the phone with a, sor- a former exec at NBC, and he was talking about the struggles of the big NBC. How, how, how come this podcast isn't successful? The, it's, it's a level playing field. You know, some of the best podcasts never make it because they were never discovered or people didn't know about them. Yeah. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty cool that way. So there's some independent podcasters that are just, I mean, look at Rogan. He started out on his own. And now he's number one for 2020. He's, he's Mr. Big, yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Not? So, but not everyone can be Joe Rogan. I mean, we shouldn't no. all say, oh, that's what we want to be. No. No. And every year it's going to be a different top dog. Yeah. I mean, really. So any last piece of advice that you have for people when it comes to the world of podcasting? Well, I think the best way to get into it is start listening. Anything you're interested in, it really doesn't matter. If there's something you're interested in, there's a podcast for it. So find a player that's either on your phone, on the Apple, it's the little purple icon. I can see if I can even... Does this recognize me? <laughs> it's not recognizing my face, Leah. There we go. <laughs> oh, technology. Yeah, see that little purple icon? Well, you can't see it. All right. Well, it's on the screen somewhere. <laughs> and uh, Android, Apple, it really doesn't matter. There's many players now. You don't actually have to listen through a proprietary player. You can search Google and podcasts will come up right in the feed and you can play them right there. So I'd say listen find podcasts you like and get to know how they're produced before you get into it and actually make one on your own. How's that? How can we get more information about Evergreen Podcasts? Well, you can go to evergreenpodcast.com. You can go to the team page and you can see all the great talented creatives that are part of the team. Um, You can uh, hashtag stream evergreen or the at tag stream evergreen on Instagram Twitter and Facebook. Um, we're on LinkedIn. Just look for Evergreen Podcasts. That's plural. And we're up to 69 shows. And we're going to be hitting 4 million podcasts next week, downloads this year. So you have to start somewhere, but podcasting uh, is just, it's a lot of fun. And the people are real nice. It's true. <laughs> so join us. Come on over. Well, thank you so much, David, for being with us today. We've I've learned even more oh, and I'm in podcast. My pleasure. So thank you so much. And you did? You learned more? I did. Oh, I always I learned from I you, was David. A blabbering, <laughs> just kind of, you know, running the tape. There's a little string in my back that they <laughs> occasionally will pull and it just it's like autoplay. Not at all. For more information on the Cleveland okay, Association good. of Broadcasters, please visit cabcleveland.com and check us out on social media.